Hello folks and welcome. So Manjaro XFCE Desktop. Are you uh, new to Linux? Are you new to Manjaro? In either case I'm going to talk about um, some tips for you today. File manager, web browser, and power options. So basically this video is made for new users but uh, maybe some seasoned users may learn a trick or two. So I've been doing this for quite a while. Anyways, I'm using a non-standard mouse pointer or cursor. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm going to be showing you um, how to create one of these in about seven seconds. And uh, that is the same thing as this thing here. So if you inadvertently delete that or you want one on your desktop, it's pretty simple to create. Uh, these take about the uh, same amount of time. It takes me longer to explain them. They are a little bit more drastic. They will shut down your system, no questions asked. And that will restart your system, no questions asked. I'll show you how to make these, but I will tell you some cautions at the same time. So I'll also show how to add these two keys here. These have timers on them. Under default conditions, you don't have these two. And then I'll talk a little bit about the file manager tips and web browser. So, Manjaro Linux Archbase System XFCE Desktop 4.18.1 6.1 Series Kernel. I'm filming and on 8.6.2023. Installed this yesterday. They also have a 6.4 Series Kernel, but everything was working, so I left it alone. CPU. I'm using our AMD Ryzen 5 today. Graphics card. AMD Radon RX 550 4 gig. Filming in 1920 by 1080. All of my videos have timelines and chapters. This will be more than two minutes. I have 190 videos on my YouTube site if you want to become a subscriber. I have lots of material. Anyways, folks, uh, my first tip of the day is Alt and F4. Closes any window. So let's first talk about web browser tips. So I'm going to open up um, Firefox. And let's use Manjaro's website as our first example. First I'll talk about if you've got a 64-bit processor. I'm using the XFCE desktop today. Not big enough for you? I'll make it bigger. I'll show you what I'm doing in a second. Plasma desktop? No. There's Budgie, Cinnamon, and countless others. All right. The reason I chose this mouse pointer because I'm going to be showing some different tips and tricks and it's nice and sharp. In other words, it has a sharp point on it. And that comes in handy for de demoing what I'm about to show you. So to resize the innards of a, of a web page, some of you folks know how to do this. Some don't. So again, I'm treating this video for folks that are fairly new to Manjaro or fairly new to Linux in general. You just need to be below this line when you do this. I'm going to hold down the control key and scroll backwards to 30%. Then I'm still holding the control key. I'm going to scroll forward multiple times until I hit 500%. That's your range, 30 to 500. Most of you folks are probably be, want to be north of 100, you know, to make things bigger. All right. I'm going to click the plus key. I'm going to give you an example of what a middle click is. So some of you folks already know what a middle click is, but for the folks that don't, I'm just going to explain it this way. You have a fairly inexpensive computer mouse with a scroll wheel. Some of these computer mice have a switch underneath the scroll wheel. Listen for it. All right, if, if yours makes that similar noise, you may have a middle click button and not know it. And now I'm going to show you some tricks so you can do with it. So I'm going to type in Google News. Uh, actually, there's a link right there. I can just click it. All right. So I'm going to open up Google News, but I'm not going to leave the page. And I'm going to actually load articles on the top line to read later. Don't focus in on the articles. The news is bad enough as it is. But just focus in on what I'm actually tempted to do. And you can use this uh, information for other things if you want. But more importantly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to middle click on these articles. And they're going to load up here without leaving this page. Hopefully that was clear. Again, middle click is pushing straight down on my scroll wheel. So I'll middle click on the first article, and then the second, and the third. And you can see I'm loading right here, but I'm not leaving this page. So I'm reading the articles, and, and um, for this purpose, I want to read these later. So I click these articles. It doesn't matter how many. 
It's just I'm clicking articles. Okay, so now these are all loading. These are also resizable independently. Don't focus in on the article. 30%, 210%. Still 30% on that one, still 210 on this one. This one's at 50%, I'll resize that back to 100, or maybe a little bit higher, 120. There's Mr. Buffett. And uh, anyways, Musk, <laughs> that's funny. All right, toking it out. We'll make them at 50%. <laughs> and we just scroll around, okay? That's all we're doing here. 150, 30, 210, 120, 50%, and this one is 130. Now, what I'm about to do is showing you how to close tabs instead of hitting that tiny X in the corner. It's a small surface area for aim for. There's other ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you how to use middle click to close this down. So I'm just gonna explain this real briefly. So the perimeter of this box, this white area, okay, your pointer just has to be in that boxed area to do a middle click to close a tab. And I can walk across with my mouse really quick and do this. So uh, what you're gonna hear is me just saying middle click and you'll see him shut down. Middle click, middle click, middle click, middle click. Middle click, middle click. What happens when I middle click the last one? It's the same as me closing this web browser. All right, so that's your tips for that. File manager time. This is Thunar. I'll just resize that and hit help. So Thunar is the file manager for the XFCE desktop generally, 4.18.6 in this case. So we can also take a look at free space at the bottom. This is your general home folder. My user for today is man23, it's just a made up name. Man as in Manjaro, 23 as in the year, but anyway, it's just a made up name. So I can double tap on this bar to make it bigger and resize, the same thing as this. Oh sure, you can right click and do the resize also. If you don't see that resizer, maybe you're in this mode. Okay, and then you, when you click that, you don't see that. All right, so you may have to click out and then click back in and do the resize. So uh, all I'm doing is double tapping, double click, double click. All right, so what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna be resizing icons in here on the fly. So I call this one Dinky and I call this one Jumbo. This is one icon. And then I'll make it somewhere in between. All right, let me first show you the standard method of resizing these things. You go to your view menu and you click zoom in, you click zoom out or normal size. You can also hold down your control key and hit plus, plus, plus to make it bigger, bigger. Hold down your control key and hit minus, minus to make it smaller, smaller. And then uh, hold down the control key and hit zero for normal size, not all, zero. Or you can use my method. I'm gonna use the control key, but I'm gonna substitute the plus, the minus, and the zero all at the same time. The same way I did in the web browser. Holding down the control key, scrolling up, scrolling back, scrolling up, scrolling back, and in between. Comes in handy for thumbnails. So speaking of, let's take the butterfly for instance. Right click, set as wallpaper. Another name for that is uh, background. Wallpaper, background, different names. Mouse pointer, mouse cursor. All right, anyways. So if you're fairly new to Linux, Linux handles things a little differently than Microsoft. Everything is literal. And Linux uses uppercase and lowercase letters. So um, these two images are the same. You agree? Actually, it's not the image. They're identical. It's the file names that are different. And you're going, what? They're both 16 JPEG. Yes, they are. However, this is 16 JPEG lowercase, and that's 16 JPEG uppercase. So hence, they're different files. I have another example for you over here that says 15 JPEG, and then 15 JPEG dot JPEG. All right. Make that a little bit bigger for you. And go find that image. Those are those two mushrooms that I've talked about. And here's the other image. 15 dot jpeg dot jpeg so some of the other operating systems don't handle this very well linux handles this just fine 
If you have digital photos or digital information, you can right click on the image, hit properties and hit the image. And uh, this was taken with an iPhone 10. My wife took that in 2021. It's a cold day that day. More importantly, camera model, aperture, metering, fired, flash, yes or no, shutter speed and all that other good stuff. All right, I can hit close, I can hit X, or I can use Alt F4, your choice. Alt F4 it is. Okay, resizing icons on the fly. I'll use the mushroom as my next example. So the file manager for this distribution, behavior, not yours, is set for double click. So is the desktop items. That's very important to understand, especially when I start talking about power keys. I just wanted to make you aware of that. That's what this is set for and these are the stuff that I'm demoing. I'm gonna hit the space bar to open the mushroom. Then I'm gonna hit the space bar or click and hit the space bar to cycle through images. When I get to an image that I want to see a zoom in on that, I hold the control key down and zoom in by scrolling forward or backwards. That is 2%. That is 2000%. 64%. Alt and L4. Are you uh, fairly new to Linux? Maybe you don't, um, maybe you came from the Microsoft world, maybe you use a Mac, or maybe you use all three. All right, so first of all, this file here, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit for you. Um, you may not see this, but that just says A on it. And that says A.txt. Both of these files are identical. They're both text files, and Linux knows this. On a Microsoft system, if I have a counterpart that I'm sending this file to on a Microsoft system or a Mac, you probably want to rename files like that with an extension. Mac interprets that as an application and Microsoft kind of goes, huh, what is it? All right, so if you're going to send files like this, a text file like this over to a Mac or a Microsoft system, use the extension TXT. Now I have three PDFs to show you and I'm only going to use one of these as the example. I'll use the camera. I'm going to open up this thing up. So in here you can scroll normally and it doesn't matter if you press the control key or not. It's not going to have much effect over here. However, over here if you press the control key and hold it while scrolling, it does the zoom thing. So basically I am going to zoom this out to 79% and I'm going to let go of the control key and then scroll up. So I get it to the point here where I want to look at some innards over here. Hold down the control key and zoom in. Scrolling forward in other words. Scrolling back, scrolling forward, scrolling back. So if I let go of the control key and I want to see what this thing is, I point at it, I scroll in. Holding down the control key, scrolling forward, scrolling back. How appropriate, zoom control. Once I get it to the size I want, I let go of the control key and I can just keep scrolling downstairs. So I don't know what that symbol is, but I'm gonna point at it and then I'm gonna hold on the control key and scroll forward. Oh, it's a plus or minus. Currently at 197%. Do I wanna stay there? I let go of the control key. Sure, why not? Page up, page down, page up, page down. Pointing at the object, scrolling in, scrolling out. Next object down here, scrolling in, scrolling out. Over here, scrolling in, scrolling out. Hopefully these tips are useful, but I'm gonna hit Alt and F4. All right, so in your file manager, you also have hidden files and folders. That would be a Control H. You can also view it here. Control H is very common with most a modern file manager for Linux to show hidden files and folders. Very common. All right, so your born again shell history, bash history, those are those things you punched into terminal are located here if you're using bash. This dot icons folder I created myself. This is where this mouse pointer is stored. It's called radioactive, hot off the press. All right, so if I back this out and hit control H, You'll probably say, oh, there it is right there. No, it's not. This is a different folder. 
This has icons in it. I'll scroll that back to let you see what I have in here. There's just standard icons that I use for demos. Okay, I'm gonna back arrow key on my, my mouse because you can also do stuff like that and resize this back up, Control H. So I manually created that folder. On some Linux distributions, when you have auto installers for mouse themes, they auto generate this folder. I usually install six or seven at a time and I have them on my backup drive right now. I have tons of them. But again, you can use your file manager for this. So let's talk about this for a second. Where's, how do you change mouse pointers? Right here, settings, mouse and touchpad. It's under themes. And as you notice, there's only one folder in here. Are the rest of these mouse pointers in here? No. This is the only one that's installed in dot icons. These are your default mouse pointers. These are installed in USR share icons. I used to show that on my previous channel quite heavily. Both methods actually. For my new channel, I have just been stating that this is your best spot for your locally logged in user. Install your mouse themes here. There's no install key here. You can do this manually if you like. Again, I, I have lots of videos on my YouTube site. So on Linux distributions, there's two locations that you install mouse pointers or cursors. Two different names for them, but, but they mean the same thing. So they're cursor size in this case. I'm using a 72, by the way. So this one is installed in dot icons. Lots of videos on my YouTube site. These are in USR share icons, protected by root permissions. They're available for all users. If I create a new user, they won't get this. You have to install it manually on their home folder dot icons, which you probably won't have. You have to create the folder. That's okay. It's very simple to do. And you can put as many mouse pointers in, in here as you want. The system is smart enough to look in both locations. It looks in dot icons and USR share icons and pulls them in here. And then you select them manually. And normally when you do this, I also recommend that you uh, probably log in and out under most normal conditions. Okay, that's where that's stored. Hidden folder, dot icons, control H. All right, I probably am just gonna make mention your file system is here, and that's where the other mouse pointers are installed. They're actually installed right here. I'm looking for the eyes. Actually, I'll just type in an I. And um, it's right there. The rest of these are in here. Alt and F4. Let's continue. All right. Right click, desktop, settings, lots of wallpaper, right? You can also use your own. This is what comes with the system as of August of 2023. All right, so I'm using 78s. So if you're curious about resizing icons like these, then you may want to crank that up. Your desktop is also using single Oh, sorry, double click by default. If you decide to hit single click, be very careful creating these kind of buttons. Because again, a single click will just immediately restart my, my system or immediately shut down my system. So that's why I'm making mention of that. By default, this is turned off on Manjaro. On some other systems though, I've seen that turned on. I, I immediately disable it for this very reason. All right, but again, it's my choice. I'm also using a custom font. Okay, you can just click that on and crank that up. All right, some extra tips for you. So let's talk about power keys. So this one here is pretty simple to make. I'm going to make this one in seven seconds. So if you delete this inadvertently, I'm going to do this on purpose, and you want to replace it. Right click, create launcher, type in L O G, pick the third item in the list, create launcher log and hit the create button twice. You have it on your screen now, but if you want it on your panel, it's right click, open with create launcher on panel and you're done. That was about seven seconds. So this is the same key as this one right here, or the same icon. All right, under default conditions, you are not gonna have the ones I have activated. So I'm gonna turn them off. This is what your Manjaro menu looks like from default. 
you'll have the multifunction key here, the logout, restart, and shutdown. Would you like one with the timer? The other thing I'm going to talk about is Hibernate. During your installation process, there is an item you can check to say Hibernate. I chose extension 4, which is default for a file system. I also chose Hibernate. It's important to understand during your installation process that you need to check that. So it, act, it, it turns on the right software to do this. That's, anyways, it creates a partition or part of a partition. So in either case, it, uh, so you can use Hibernate. So uh, let's talk about acting, activating some extra keys. Right click, properties, commands, Restart, shut down. That's all you need to do. There's other stuff in here. This one now, I can just walk away from the computer and in 60 seconds it'll shut itself down. Or I can force it. Or cancel. It's still counting down nonetheless. So again, I don't have to click anything. So if I wanted to get coffee and reboot, I would just do that and walk out the door. In 60 seconds it's going to restart. Okay, you get the idea. You want some more options? All right, right click. I'm gonna actually remove this. So right click on your panel, hit add new items, and uh, action buttons. You can double click or drag, it doesn't matter. Just drop it. And uh, this one here defaults with shutdown, suspend, switch user, and lock screen and logout. You don't see a restart in here. That's okay though, we can fix that. Right click, properties, and it's got actions. You can just slide the slider down and click that and you're done. So this one is 30 seconds auto shutdown. Again, I don't have to click anything or I can manually click or cancel. This one is 60 seconds. So there's your two ways if you're wanting time frames. This again is manual clicks. These buttons on the other hand are what I call, you have to be aware of these. Again, one more time, I'm using double click on my desktop. It's very important to understand when you're using keys like this. Whenever you are touching power keys, I don't care if it's these or especially these, save your files first before touching these. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make these. They are using different commands. I'll even get rid of that because I can create that in a couple seconds. Actually, both of them. So I'm going to right click and create launcher because that's what these are. So you're going to create these yourself. So uh, what's another name for restart? How about reboot? And I'm going to put in the word now because that's what I want this thing to do. I don't want it to reboot in five minutes, 10 minutes. I want it to do it now if I'm going to double click on something. Comments are optional. So command. So I'll let you see what the command is for this one by hitting properties. And I want you to focus in on the command line, not as much for the icon. Okay, comments are optional. Command line on this, if you can't read this, I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. Keep in mind, all my videos have timelines and chapters. And again, I encourage that you subscribe so you can watch this at your leisure. So the command is shut down. I've shown this before, but with a little twist this time. Shut down space dash small r space N-O-W, as in now. Okay, and I'll sign it an icon. So you could put in reboot. All right, there's a standard reboot icon. That's the one I'm using. Or you can do silly stuff like emoji cons. I just need to clear the field. All right, I'll use smiley face. I don't have, need to have it doing uh, startup and I don't have, need to have it run in terminal. Again, launchers are powerful. You can do a lot of things with them. Remember I created that other button in seven seconds. Now I'm using this to create a button that does a um, shutdown and a restart. So literally what this command performs is a full shutdown and then it reboots the machine. Now, meaning after you double click on these icons. So this icon and this icon do the same function, even though they're different names and different icons. They both do the same thing because I want you to focus in on the command lines. They perform the same command. 
shut down, lowercase, space, dash R, space now. This icon here has a different command, and it's very simple actually. So I used to show the same shutdown command in a different format though, but today I'm going to give you a different command. So create launcher. Uh, what's another one for shutdown? How about power off? What's in a name, right? So you're probably going to, oh, there's one right there. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to do this on purpose. Not that I'm wasting time. I just wanted to let you see this is power manager, not what you wanted. Right click, create launcher. So power off now. It's a good name for this, right? So comments are optional. It's that simple, power off. I'll show you what that one looks like because I was using it just right before this video. It's power off, that's the command for it. You can test this yourself. Save your files first before doing any of that stuff. All right, what, what's in an icon? Well, you know what, if you want this one, click that, type in shut in all icons. Okay, there's the icon for that. Do I want to be goofy about it and find my own image? Sure, why not? Let's do that. So in my home folder, I have an icon folder. You saw it earlier, okay? I have weird stuff. I'll use Stormtrooper, how's that? Again, the command, I, I don't want you to focus in more on the icon than as opposed to the command. So power off is the command. So these two icons now perform the same action. One more time, double click, powers off the system. If you decide to throw these on your panel, whether you do it this way, right click, open with create launcher on panel, you can certainly do that. I know it's underneath the subscription key, so I'm gonna move it, right click and move. I have to be really careful with this. Anytime you see a red line, I'll move it on the other side. These are single click icons. That one powers my system down immediately. So I don't, in most cases, don't want it on my panel in case I inadvertently click that. Just, it's your machine, it's your panel. Just be careful with these kind of keys. Again, these are double clicks. The ones on your panel bar are single clicks. Restart now, shut down now. Okay, thank you for watching.